that's not what we signed up for, right? We signed up for life, <laughs> for life together, right? Not just a few years together. Hey everybody, it's Darnell, and thanks so much for tuning in today. Uh, today I'm gonna be talking about the process of actually losing 150 pounds. I know that for my first two videos, they were focused more so on just like concepts or the mindset of it all, but I did wanna do a high level view of what the process looked like for me, uh, going from 320 pounds to 170 pounds. So to start off, just wanna give you a little bit of a history of who I am in case you're not somebody that knows me. Uh, the earliest I can ever remember weighing myself was probably when I was in fourth grade and I was 175 pounds. So I was 10 years old, 175 pounds. Uh, the second time I remember weighing myself was eighth grade when we had to do the physicals for sports uh, and I was 260 pounds then. By the time I graduated from high school, I was 284 pounds. And then by the time I finished my freshman year of college, I was 320 pounds. Uh, and then it wasn't until after my freshman year of college when I finally stopped playing sports that weight became an issue because I was no longer, my nickname growing up was Big D. So I was no longer Big D the football player and right? I was no longer Big D the athlete, right? I was just Darnell Gillette. Uh, the, the kid that was extremely overweight and unhealthy. But my senior year of college, I was about to graduate and graduating college wasn't something that was always a guarantee for me just from a financial standpoint. Um, I had to do a lot to just financially be able to afford going to college, etc. And we'll talk about that story another time as well. But going into my senior year, since I was about to get my education right and I was about to accomplish this goal that I never thought I was going to be able to do, I said, hey, why not also focus on getting healthy as well so when you finish graduating, you'll have your degree right, you'll have your education right, you'll be setting yourself up from a financial perspective, and then your physical health is also going to match some of the other successes that you've had in the other areas. So I joined a gym and I always had an understanding of how to lift, but I hated cardio. I mean, I absolutely loathed cardio. Uh, even when I did track, I would literally hide in the corner when everybody did the warm-up lap around the school. I would find some corner to hide in so I wouldn't have to do that lap because I literally viewed cardio as punishment. So the first thing I started doing was I knew that I had to implement cardio into my workout. Um, I got a job at that gym as well, uh, so the gym membership ended up being free for me. And I committed to going to the gym five days a week. Uh, and most of my time was spent on the elliptical or the treadmill. So I started off at about 320 and over the course of working there for six months, I was doing cardio five days a week uh, for about 45 minutes to an hour. And then after doing that, I would also lift for about a half an hour as well. Uh, it's funny because before I started going to the gym, I was I was pretty much known for being one of the strongest kids like in my school, in the county, et cetera. And uh, quick story is I remember growing up, uh, I got to the point where I could bench 225 like at the end of a workout for 25 to like 30 reps. So it was like pretty easy for me. And in my mind, I always thought, hey, I'm never gonna touch below 225, right? Like for me, 225, that's my warm up. So the first time I went to the gym and I was about to get on the bench, um, so I threw 225 on there with one of my friends and I got on there and I literally could only do it once. And that's when I knew, okay, like you completely fell off. You are starting from scratch here. But what I decided to do was really just focus on the cardio. So going on the elliptical uh, because that was low impact. I didn't really do much for the bike. The Stairmaster was really big for me. I didn't overcomplicate it from a cardio perspective. Um, and I didn't even understand how cardio worked or why it worked or the idea of calories or anything. I just knew that in order to lose weight, I had to do cardio and uh, that's what I did. So I'll literally go on any of these machines, the Stairmaster, the elliptical for 45 minutes. And then after that, I would also lift for about 30 minutes or so, which was something that was always easy for me. And I started to see some progress. So between 
probably September 1st of that year to, uh, so September 1st of 2008 to about June of 2009, I dropped from 320 pounds down to 200 and about 70 pounds or so. Uh, and that happened over the course of that period. In addition to working out though, I also implemented the common sense diet. If you didn't watch the first video that I posted uh, regarding the five tips to starting a diet, uh, definitely watch that because I do talk about what the common sense diet is but at a high level I stopped drinking juice I stopped eating fast food so instead of going to like McDonald's for example I might go to the deli and get like a turkey wrap or something like that with like oil and vinegar uh, something along those lines just trying to instill some better habits uh, and, and just cutting out sweets because I had a huge sweet tooth etc so literally just from doing the common sense diet cutting out the things that I know I needed to cut out and then also implementing consistent cardio in that period I dropped 60 pounds when I left the gym I, uh, I had to shift how I was working out um, one of the reasons why I uh, left the gym I, I stopped working there but also uh, there were just a lot of people that would make a lot of comments uh, different types of comments uh, that we'll get into uh, because one of the videos I do want to make is talking about the hardest part about losing weight and the I'll tell you right now, I'll, I'll mess up the mystery of it. And the hardest part about losing weight wasn't the diet, it wasn't the working out, it was all of the unsolicited comments, uh, which is a really important topic to talk about. So after I left the gym, my main focus was just running because that was free, right? Nobody can stop me from going to my high school track and running around the track or running around the campus. Uh, however, I did it all in private uh, because I just didn't want people to see me uh, because honestly, I was afraid of people commenting. I had a few different scenarios and situations, which I'm not gonna talk about in this very second, that made it very uncomfortable for me to to uh, pursue this weight loss goal um, in front of people because I didn't want people to see me struggle. Um, I didn't want people to cast doubt on me. I didn't want people to give me their opinion of what they think I should be doing or shouldn't be doing or whatever it is. Um, because there's a lot of times people, they're, they're not really giving you advice for you. They're giving you advice for them. Like they, they want to elevate themselves in a position where it's like, okay, because you're in a worse physical position than me, it makes me feel a certain way. So there were like a few people that I did let in and that were very helpful, but for the most part, I was just grinding in private. The way I did that was two ways. So either one, I started to go on what I would call midnight runs. So literally when everybody else was asleep um, at 11 o'clock or 12 at night, that's when I would run. So I would literally go, there was a, this path that I would run around my city uh, at like 12 at night uh, when I knew everybody was gonna be asleep. As a black man in America, Looking back at it now, that probably wasn't a good idea uh, to be running the nighttime like that. Uh, but I won't, I won't get political on this video. But you know, obviously, it's probably not the best idea. But that's just what I felt I had to do because I didn't want people to see me run. The other thing that I was doing was I would only because now we were in the summer months. I would go to my high school at like twelve or one o'clock when the sun was at its highest point. So at like the hottest point during the day, I would go to my high school because I knew nobody else was gonna be crazy enough to go and run on, uh, run around that time of day. And, and that moment, I knew that I was gonna have peace and quiet and just the ability to focus on me and my goals, me and my uh, workouts, me and like this battle with myself um, without any distractions or without any comments. So I just started off like running the straights and walking the turns because I could not, if you, if you gave me a million dollars to run a full lap around the track, I would not be able to do it, right? You could have given me $1 billion right now and I would not have been able to do it. But I started off just running the straights and walking the turns. And then I started off saying, okay, well, let me run 200 and then let me walk 100 and then let me walk run 200 and walk 100 and then pretty soon that progressed into like running one lap and then it progressed into running two laps and then it progressed into running a mile and then it progressed into running the entire school campus 
Um, so between the beginning of the summer and the end of the summer, I dropped from around like 270 down to 236 going into my very last semester of school. Um, and I was literally running probably six miles a day, five days a week. So you're talking about like from that period, just from being consistent, I was able to come from being a person that was only able to jog 100 yards to a person that was able to run six uh, miles straight without stopping at a pretty good pace. Um, I, it, it's a, Looking back, it's definitely unfortunate that I had to do that in private. It's unfortunate that I had to put myself in a position where I was training in heat that I probably shouldn't have been training in or that I was... Um, running at times of night that I shouldn't have been running in. But that's the only way that I could do it uh, in private. That's the only way that I could keep my sanity and keep my motivation and, and not allow people to really mess up my self-esteem uh, and, and perception of myself as I went on this journey that was already hard enough as it is. So that's essentially how I dropped down from 320 to 236. Then I entered into my last semester of college. Quick story about how I pursued college. So typically what I would do is I would go to school two days a week and I would work every other day. So I would stack my schedule, five classes, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, I'll be working, whether it's at the gym or in retail or whatever it is. And that's pretty much what I did every semester. But in this one, um, this last semester, I had to take classes four days a week because you're in the last semester and there's only certain slots. And I took advantage of that. So what I there were a few things that I did. The first is every day I would go to school early. I, I went to Baruch College, so in Manhattan. So I would go into the city early and I would just use the school's gym uh, to work out, get the lifting in, go on the bike, go on the elliptical, etc. And then I would just use the shower at the school uh, before I got into class. So that's something that I did for the entire semester. In addition to that, uh, anybody that's familiar with the Baruch College, the campus, uh, it, they have this vertical campus and it's 14 stories. So typically when you're trying to get into like the elevator, you would have to like squeeze in to get in because you don't know when the next one is going to come. So my last semester, I said, I'm not going to take the elevator at all. So if I had a class on the 14th floor, I would walk up 14 flights. And if the next class was on the second floor and it was like back to back, I would have to run down 12 flights of stairs to get to that class on time. That semester, I was able to drop down from 236 to around 219. Uh, and that's where I ended my college, uh, my college career at was 219. So I started at 320 at the end of my freshman year. And then by the end of my senior year, um, I was down to about 219. And that was the first 100 pounds that I lost. When I was 23, uh, I had a different motivation. It was just like, let me see if I can do this. However, now I'm a 34 year old man that is married uh, to, to a, I've been with my wife. Well, we've been married for a few years now, but we've been together. It's going to be 10 years in July. Um, and now I'm a, I'm a man with a wife. I'm a man with a home. Um, I'm a man with, that is making plans with somebody else about our future. And I'm sitting here thinking about going to the doctors because I'm having these weird health issues. I'm here thinking about like life insurance policies because like, yo, if I'm gone, then I need to make sure that like at least she's not in this life thing by herself because that's not what we signed up for, right? We signed up for life, <laughs> for life together, right? Not just a few years together. And that was something that really prompted me to start taking my health journey seriously again. In 2019, I decided, hey, let me, let me re-kick this thing off and let me see what I can do. And my first goal that I set was like, okay, let me get under 200 pounds because I do not know what that looks like in my adult life. Like I mentioned earlier, by the time I was in eighth grade, I was 260 pounds, right? So I'm like, let me just get under 200 pounds. In the beginning of 2020, I started doing the Daniel Fast with my church. I'm not going to get into the details of what the Daniel Fast is, but I will post the link below uh, in terms of what that is. Um, so I started doing that and it really helped me with being disciplined around eating and just meditating and being with myself and just being disciplined. So that's what I started off doing. Uh, and then 
COVID hit, right? And that just changed the game uh, for, for everybody in America and our country. But what, what I viewed it as is like, okay, since I'm not going into the office anymore, what are some of the things that I can do? So I really started to dive into like, okay, well, how can I cook more? How can I leverage the commute time to get more consistent with working out? And I was able to build out a gym literally February of 2020, right before COVID hit. And I really lucked out because once March hit, inventory was gone and all of the prices were extremely inflated. So at that point, um, I started the process of eating a little bit differently. I got into the anabolic diet, which I touched on a little bit in the video about the top five tips to start your diet, but I'll also talk about it in depth in another video. And that really helped me understand the idea of calories in versus calories out and how to make sure that you're eating enough volume to make sure that you're full. Uh, so that's something that I did just from a high level in terms of eating. Uh, and then I also signed up for uh, Zwift. I have a Schwinn IC4 bike, which I'll show you another time. And I love that bike because it is compatible with different apps like Zwift, which is a virtual racing app, uh, which is super fun. It makes cardio really fun. I'll put the link in uh, below. Uh, and then it's also compatible with Peloton. Um, I don't use Peloton personally, but I got it because something that my wife uh, could potentially use as well. Um, so I like the versatility of it. I also got a beach body on demand membership, which was huge because sometimes like when you start the process of working out, you don't necessarily know what to do. And having one of these programs is like a huge value because all you have to do is press play. So I did, uh, so first I did P90X, which is 90 days. Uh, after I did P90X, I did Insanity and um, Body Beast together. So I did Insanity in the morning and then I did Body Beast in the afternoons. Through that process, I was always doing like biking and consistent cardio. And then I I kind of exceeded a lot of the goals because I had set this long time horizon of literally saying, hey Darnell, it's gonna take you about three years for you to get the body that you want. And by July, I had already dropped down to, to around like one, 90 or so. Um, so I was crushing the goals that I had set for myself, um, but it's better to set long goals and beat those goals as opposed to setting like short time horizon goals, missing them and then getting discouraged. Um, so, so that's what I did there. After I finished the Body Beast uh, Insanity Hybrid, then I moved into this like strength building program through Beachbody as well, where it was strictly like, all of the strength workouts from P90X and I did this hybrid and then I also accompanied that with steady state cardio on my home bike. And by the time, like before Thanksgiving hit, uh, I was down to 170 pounds. And I never thought in a million years that was where I was gonna be. Uh, but it was just a matter of trusting the process, right? So the first time when I lost 100 pounds, it was literally all will and because I was so overweight, that worked. But then when I was trying to really finish it off and get those last 50 pounds, which a lot of times we talk about plateaus, that's when you can't just like work hard. You have to work smart and you have to understand why you're doing what you're doing. Today, I range between 175 pounds to 180 pounds. Um, I have different goals, which I'll talk about in another video. However, um, that is my uh, process to losing 150 pounds. Uh, it's a little bit of personal, it's a little bit of process. However, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please do not forget to like, uh, do not forget to subscribe, do not forget to share. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate y'all. See you soon.